Water vision in Nebraska. Knowledge of groundwater resources in the state is robust and critical to water management. With existing technology used in new ways, however, the ability to assess that resource is improving all the time. Recently passed state legislation now requires that groundwater use be more strictly regulated than at any other time in the state's history. This means knowing more about the state's groundwater systems in order to help make regulatory decisions that comply with current water law. But while much is known about major aquifer systems in the state, the regional and local aquifers that underlie eastern Nebraska and the extent to which they interact with streams and other aquifers is much less well understood. Uh, one of the biggest problems we have in Nebraska right now is trying to understand groundwater and surface water relationships in the glacial till of eastern Nebraska. It covers approximately 20 percent of the state. It's uh, home to almost 70 percent of the state's population and it is one of the least understood geologic problems for us. A pilot study underway by the U.S. Geological Survey in cooperation with state and local agencies is the best way to assess the complex water bearing units in this area. One of the reasons that we're doing this study is because of the difficulty in mapping glacial deposits. Because there is no systematic way that the ice just lets everything down onto the ground, it literally advances and carries all this stuff with it, but then when it retreats it just dumps it. Uh, the, the process is well understood, but mapping those sediments is very difficult. The pilot study includes three study areas, Ashland, Firth, and Oakland seen here in red boxes. Each represents variations in hydrogeology to test the validity of the data being collected. Using a method called Helleborn Electromagnetic Surveying, or HEM, scientists hope to see a delineation of aquifer boundaries and a clearer picture of surface water groundwater interaction. We're, we're hoping to see where some of the these aquifers lie uh, perhaps some of the depth so that we can target as to where to put some of our monitoring wells which are going to follow the HEM surveys. At the airport in Fremont, Nebraska, USGS scientists and the HEM flight crew meet with reporters to explain and demonstrate the HEM survey method. This is done not only to satisfy curious onlookers, but also to reassure members of the public who might be frightened by this unfamiliar site. The HEM data is collected by helicopter, which flies in a grid pattern dangling a missile-like object approximately 100 feet above the ground. Special instruments in the missile emit electromagnetic waves that bounce off subsurface features and return to the instrument. Collected data is then represented in layers, revealing whether sediment deposits are more or less likely to be water bearing. The HEM data is being checked against more traditional surveying methods, such as test hole drilling. We're, we're here as part of the uh, Eastern Nebraska Water Resource Assessment Project. Uh, we're working with multiple uh, natural resource districts, the USGS, and then we, the Conservation and Survey Division, are involved with trying to figure out uh, what the interaction is between our aquifers and our surface water systems, as well as between multiple aquifers we have. The work that we're doing in the test hole drilling program, we are the control points for all the surface and aerial geophysics being performed by the USGS. In addition to test hole drilling and installing groundwater monitoring wells to assure the accuracy of the HEM survey data, Scientists are also conducting time domain electromagnetic surveys. These surveys use similar technology as the HEM survey, only the data is collected at ground level. As with the test hole data, the time domain survey data will be compared to the HEM data to make sure the resulting model is as close to reality as possible. 
In addition, seismic studies, which use the Earth's vibrations to determine depth to bedrock, will be conducted to fill in data gaps. And of course, all of these methods will come together to answer the bigger question of groundwater availability for users in this part of the state. Scientists say that so far, the HEM studies have produced reliable data. This bodes well for expanded use of this surveying method, which is faster and less expensive than more traditional hydrogeologic surveying methods. There is very little groundwater here, and groundwater is a precious commodity for the state of Nebraska. And providing supply to all of the homes through here for rural water districts, for the towns, uh, making sure we have enough flow in the river, rivers and streams for the need uh, uses that are uh, in those basins is a very difficult problem. This work cannot be done without a cast of many, including the local cooperators. Uh, the local cooperators have been an essential resource to get this work done. Not only funding, but manpower, permissions, everything that goes into making a quality survey. They played an integral part along with state and federal agencies to make this happen.